If you want to read verse 13. Let's read a lot from our Bibles. Verse 13. The breaker is come up before them. Let's read again. The break eyes come up before them. They have broken up and have passed through the gate. They are gone out by it. And their king shall pass before them. And the Lord on the head of them. The Lord told me that this is the month of breaking through. This is the month of breaking through. Lift your hands to the Lord. Father, we want to thank you and bless you. Thank you that you're giving us insight in your word. The Lord God Almighty, we will be in tandem with what it is that you're saying. As it is in heaven, so shall it be on earth. To the honor and to the blessing of your name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You can have your seats in the presence of the Lord. Second Samuel chapter 23 from verse 14. Second Samuel 23 and verse 14. The Bible says, And David was then in an hold. And the garrison of the Philistines was then in Bethlehem. And David longed that he, and said, Oh, that one would give me drink of the water of the well of Bethlehem, which is by the gate. And the three mighty men break through the host of the Philistines and drew water out of the well of Bethlehem that was by the gate and took it and brought it to David. Nevertheless, he would not drink thereof, but poured it out unto the Lord. And he said, Be it far from me, O Lord, that I should do this. Is this not, is not this the blood of men that went in jeopardy of their lives? Therefore, he would not drink it. These things did these mighty men. There is an expression of God where he comes, his name is called a breaker. Very interestingly, this name is specifically found in by the prophet Micah or Mika. He's the one that talks about this expression of God. He says, the breaker shall come. There are things that when God wants to do in your life, or there are things in the plan of God. Jesus spoke in the book of Matthew chapter 16. He said to Peter, upon this rock I will build this, my church. He said, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail. So there's something that he also talked about concerning Jerusalem. He said that your, thine enemies shall build an embankment round about thee. So there's a habit, there is a, a f demonic flow that comes to hedge the continuity of what God wants to do in a person's life. It can't stop the beginning, but it creates walls, it creates gates, it creates barricades. Comes and sees, God has begun to do something in Kingdom and Life Embassy. And the enemy comes and builds an embankment, a besiegement, in that you are surrounded. So everything within that space, when you look at it, it looks perfect. Everything, everything is intact. But you can't have flourishing beyond a certain scope. Because the enemy has done what? He has besieged. He has built an embankment. He has surrounded you and fortified himself around you. I talked about this the time when we were talking about the time when Assyria surrounded Jerusalem. Rather, it surrounded Samaria. In the days of Elisha. The king came and surrounded. He did not, he did not break into the camp of the Israelites. He just came and he surrounded. Surrounded them. The Bible says, and because they were surrounded, it says, None was going in, none was going out. So what happened? The situation within the city began to deteriorate. Why? Because 
even though everything is left intact even though everything is left intact but because of this besiegement there is no access in there is no access out there can't be expansion and so if there is no room for expansion then things begin to eat themselves there begins to be consumption instead of preservation within the walls and so they have eaten the meals until they get to a place now where they're eating a donkey's head and they're eating doves down what did they do they did not plunge into the city they did not they did not uh, thrust themselves into the city they just besieged they just besieged them David finds himself in the same space where he's in a hold or in a cave he's in a hold he's in a space of hiding but then in Bethlehem which is supposed to be the city of David at that particular time it is surrounded by who by the Philistines they have taken possession of a place so what happens David can't move from where he is from the hold to enter into Bethlehem now the provisions that he requires are not where he is the provisions he requires are in Bethlehem his sustenance is not where he is at at the hold so David understands that he begins to ask for the waters of Bethlehem is it because where he is there are no waters no it is because at the point he's in in his life where he's supposed to move is Bethlehem but what has happened to Bethlehem the enemy has come and has besieged has taken over the place of advancement I don't know if you're understanding what I'm saying because a lot of the things that even we are struggling with today is not because we are not content where we are but because we can't continue from where we are the enemy has mastered that I can't move beyond where I am God has done certain things in my life but it is there is something that has happened that will keep me locked in this place keep me keep me locked in a certain space if it is in terms of revelation I will be locked in a revelation if it is in terms of advancement in terms of, of physical movement there will be nothing that moves everything will seem to be stagnant what has stagnated it because the point you're supposed to move into what has happened in that place it has been taken over it has been besieged it has been taken it's been possessed if you can understand that trick that's why I'm praying uh, God opens your eyes that you're able to see what it is that I'm saying that the enemy does not go and position himself where you are he goes and positions himself where you're supposed to go it's not where you are it's not where you are it's where you're supposed to be heading It's where this thing is supposed to prevail so he comes that is what Jesus tells Simon Peter he tells him that I will build my church but what will happen in this church is that it won't be contained by gates it won't be contained by gates it won't be measured It won't be measured it won't be measured the gates of Hades shall not prevail the enemy shall not build an embankment around you to get to a place where you're surrounded by gates yes God is doing something because let me tell you what has happened how God has been lost through generations is not because God wasn't doing things at present time but because that experience was surrounded it couldn't move beyond a certain trajectory what was needed to move it was not available so what happens because the enemy's work is to institute gates the enemy doesn't just build walls you have to understand that tell of God hear what I'm saying the enemy does not just build walls he builds gates and so that the access point is controlled that if you will get out of that space then you have gotten out according to the terms that are laid out at the gates so you won't just get out you will just get out something we were discussing with my wife because we have noticed that it's not that God has not done mighty things in the past before it's so it's not that God has not used men mightily but what happened what happened there are things that come and arrest people in a certain move in a certain space so yes God continues to move but then it's not moving beyond there it's not moving beyond that periphery God is moving beyond um, among three brethren but he he can't move beyond that something 
thing has come and it's called a demonic embankment where you are surround, besieged. So we are here, we are having this fellowship, two or three, wherever two or three are gathered, he is in the midst of them. But also God, Jesus is the same one. The Bible says he's the same yesterday, today and forever. So he's the same one that also was amongst multitudes. As he was among three, as he is among three, so also was he among multitudes. So what happens? It begins to eat itself. It begins to eat itself. The, the place where this thing is supposed to push you into, the space where it is supposed to grow you into, you don't get to enter into that space. Why? Because you have been surrounded. So growth is what has been captured. Growth is what has been captured. When you begin walking with God, there is growth. There is physical growth. There is solical growth. Your soul grows. Your soul prospers. Your spirit man also prospers. There is advancement. And it is never one-sided. Because God grows the whole man. He grows the entire person. The body, the soul, and the spirit. That's why Paul says that, that thy whole body body, soul, and spirit may be preserved until the coming of the Lord Jesus. That your whole body, soul, and spirit, your entire being is supposed to be preserved. Where you are moving, you should be moving with the entirety of your person. But gates will ensure that there are controls. Something I was sharing yesterday when, in, uh, during the Kingdom Girls uh, prayer meeting, that the enemy likes to to separate or to sever the tri tripartite man or the, the three-part man, the body, the soul, and the spirit, so that there are things that will happen to your body, but they will not be happening to your soul, and they will not be happening to your spirit, that there will be a distinction within your person. And what does that foster? It fosters confusion. It brings confusion. So he comes and builds a gate. Jericho was tightly shut up because of the children of Israel. It says that none went in, none went in, none came out. It's tightly shut up. Now, you have to understand that it is shut up against the same people that parted the Red Sea. So, God is able to part the, I want you to see that. that God passed the Red Sea for these people. The Jordan. He parted the Red Sea, but he also parted the Jordan. So, these ones, the Lord has actually just parted the Jordan for them. These are the same people. Listen to me, child of God. These are the same people that a city is shut and they can't access it. So the trouble is not just in Jericho inside, but it is also outside. Because these ones can't move on. Because for them to move where they're supposed to go, they're supposed to prevail over Jericho. God can't take them ahead until Jericho is prevailed over. But neither can they access Jericho. Neither can they access Jericho. Why? Because it is tightly shut up. A city that has walls, but also has gates. There are a lot of things, let me tell you, child of God. There are a lot of things that the enemy has been locking in, in that wise. God did not tell Joshua, that they are going to go and approach the gates. God did not tell Joshua you're going to approach the gates. He did not tell him you're going to pick up the gates. He told him I will give you victory over Jericho. But what would what happened when God gave him the, the victory? He removed the walls. The Bible says that the walls fell down. They didn't fall. They didn't fall backward or forward. They fell. It's like they fell in to the earth. That's the most remarkable thing. When they shouted, after keeping instruction, when they shouted, God did not tell them now go through the gates. He did not tell them go through the gates. What did he tell them? When you hear the sound, then go forward. When they went forward, the walls came down. The walls went down and their entire defense was gone. That is what is called the breaker. 
when God comes in that wise, because the God that was with Moses was the God that was giving them the law, but the God that was with Joshua was the God that was giving them victory. There are dispensations as you walk with God. There are dispensations as you walk with God. God will move you from glory to glory. He will move you from faith to faith. He will move you from righteousness to righteousness. God is a God that will shift you. So with Moses, they have to learn the instruction of a land, but they can't access the land through Moses. Joshua has to teach them victory. That's why his name is Yeshua or Yeshua. As the writer of Hebrews calls him Jesus. Meaning what? Salvation. Meaning what? Deliverance. The breaker. The one that is not afraid of the camp of the enemy. The one whose enemies must be scattered before. So that dispensation was a dispensation where their enemies were coming low. The psalmist said that you removed them and you planted thine own inheritance in the land. You have to realize that in this month of October, God has released something spectacular. What is it? That there is a breaking through. There is a breaking. He is called the breaker. It's not, it's not that we have gained more strength to break through. No. It is the Lord that is called the breaker. Because the breaker doesn't make you break through. The breaker is the one that goes before you. What happens is a greater revelation of God in that space like never before. It's not the hand of a man that prevails over the walls. No. It is God. That victory that Joshua received over Jericho. That's why God received everything that was from Jericho. Why? Because the victory was not from the hand of a man. The victory was not from the hand of a man. Who shalika prepare Zahula? Let him break through. Let him. Ooh. Let the breaker be made manifest. Let the ah. Let the breaker be made manifest. There are things that have been standing as stumbling blocks. There are things that are called. The psalmist calls them in the book of Psalm 24. He calls them ancient gates. And ancient gates. There are everlasting gates and there are ancient gates. Ancient gates are gates that have already set a precedence of how it is that you're supposed to respond when you come to it. Ancient gates are gates that have set a pattern. When God comes as the breaker, he does not just command the gates to lift up their heads, but he also commands the walls to bow themselves down. This month of October, things that you have tried to prevail over the breaker is come up before you oh hallelujah the one whose name is the breaker has gone ahead ah jesus sent a message to his disciples he said and go and tell them that i have gone ahead of them he said i have gone go tell them i have gone ahead of them Tell the brethren, I've gone ahead of them into Galilee. I've gone ahead. The breaker is come up before you. Uh, so you have broken up. You have passed through the gates. And you're going out. You have come. You have passed through. And you're going out. This month, everything that has been a limitation. Everything that has been controlling. Things. Some of you, for as long as you've been alive, those things have always controlled you. As long as you've been alive, those things have always, always controlled you. But this month, the breaker, this month, the breaker has gone before. This month, the, the breaker has gone before. Jericho is tightly shut up, but the breaker has gone before. You will not go in with your swords. No, you, you will not go. You will not go in because of what it is that you know in terms of military might. No, you will go with the sound of a trumpet. You will go with the sound of a trumpet. That which is happening is a breaking through. The breaker has gone ahead. Ah, the breaker is going ahead of us. The ah, yeah, 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 yeah. This is the month of breakthrough. I say this is the month of breakthrough. 
This is the month where the breaker is going ahead. He is going ahead. He is going before us. Oh, for he said that you shall not move in haste. He said, for the Lord shall be thy fraud and he shall be thy rare reward. He shall be thy fraud. You will not move in haste. It will not be a hasty move. It will be an instructed move. Because he has gone ahead. So you will come to the gates. You will come to the very place that has limited you before. But when you get there, you will pass through and you will go out. You will come. You will go out. This month you will go out. This month you are exiting spaces that have kept you for generations. You are getting out of things that have kept you for generations. The breaker. So God gave David three mighty men. God gave David three mighty men. He gave him three mighty men. That he would not desire the waters of Bethlehem and they still remain that so that he does not have to go and ask the Philistines for permission to access the waters oh when the desire of David came up God went ahead of him there were three men three mighty men that broke through the grace that they had was to go to Bethlehem and was to come back was to break through the garrison as they went and was to break through the garrison as they, ay, 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 ay. that going and coming back the breaker is still before them because God Jesus said it he said that he's the door of the ship he said that, that through me by me whoever comes in by me says he shall go in he says he shall come out and he shall find pastor listen it is always guaranteed that what you're looking for you must find what you're desiring you must locate if Jesus is your if Jesus is that then there are places where that door is going to open there are places where you are going to get access you will go in so they went in and you will come out and they came out and they came carrying water from Bethlehem and it overwhelmed David it was so overwhelming that that which he was desiring to drink he couldn't even drink <laughs> he said this is the souls of men God gave him souls of men. He did not give him just a desire. He gave him the souls of men. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that this month, let there be a breaking. Today, as you take this communion, you will sense it. You will know it. You will know that he has gone ahead. He has gone, he has gone ahead. The one that couldn't be contained by a grave has gone ahead of you. The one that refused to be held by... The Bible says that it was impossible for death to hold him. Jesus raised God raised Jesus by the spirit of holiness. Why? Because it was impossible. It was impossible. It was impossible. So the one that is going up ahead of you, it's not hard. It is impossible for death to hold him. It's impossible for him to be controlled. It's impossible. It's impossible for him to be constrained. It's impossible for him to be determined how far he can go. The one that goes ahead of you, his name is the breaker. What he is going ahead of you in, he has already prevailed over. What he is leading you through, that's what the Bible says, that he leads us in triumph. He leads us in triumphal processions. We are triumphing over them. We are prevailing. We are not just escaping, but we are prevailing. We are coming to the gate, but we are passing through the gate. And we are going out. We are going out. This ministry is going out. No matter the words that were said that have become walls and gates over this ministry. We are going out. We are going out. I say we are going out. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We are going out. We are going out this month. Oh, hallelujah. And this month you will believe the Lord. I release upon you the faith uh, to be led out. Uh, the Bible says that you shall be led out with joy. Uh, you shall be led out with joy. You shall be... He is leading you out joyfully. It's not with sorrow. It is with joy. It's not, it's not with sorrow. It is with... It's not with sorrow. It is with joy. It's with joy. Oh, hallelujah. 
and their king shall pass before them and the Lord on the head of them your king shall pass before you the Lord is at your head the Lord is ahead let me tell you the most important thing concerning this month is that God has already gone ahead of the days you're going to live the story of the month of October 2023 this 10th month the story is different because the Lord has gone ahead I say because the Lord has gone ahead I say because the Lord has gone ahead he has gone ahead of us he broke through the grave he will break he broke and he didn't just come out alone he he came out the Bible says and many saints souls of saints that were bound came out with him he did not just come out he let them he let them he let them God is going to lead you into victory this month like never before oh hallelujah glory to the name of Jesus Oh, Labakasha. Bible says you shall go out in joy. It says you shall be led forth with peace. For I have received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you. The Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. So Jesus decided, because it is written in the book of Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 23. But he has consecrated a new and a living way so our way beyond the veil is a new and a living way which is his body so in essence what Jesus was doing is that he took his body and he broke it and when he broke it not only was the body severed but a, a way was made through his body so that so that where I should be constrained or restrained, then with the body broken, <laughs> with the body broken, that broken body is what I go through, is what I step in through. The new, I need to read that scripture so that, so that it doesn't seem like I'm saying things and speaking to myself. Hebrews chapter 10. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 19, sorry. It says, Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. Verse 20. It calls it what? By a new and living way which he hath consecrated for us through the veil. That is to say, 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 his flesh so he consecrated a new and a living way so this so so the reason how this thing works is that it lives it lives when Jesus resurrected from the grave he appeared twice amongst the disciples while the doors were closed they shut themselves in but he appeared he appeared why because he went through his own body because that way is new and living so what he does he comes and positions it says this person is supposed to be hindered here but he says you will go through the veil because he puts that place and says now step in through so so he said this is my body that is broken you follow so then he comes and says tap tap walk through the door is the door is open he says walk through if you can understand this revelation 
that I'm supposed to be shut in a specific place but his body is broken I'm supposed to be I'm supposed to be confused but the body is but the body is broken how is it broken it is broken in the same way the veil was torn it was it wasn't just broken it wasn't just bruised but it was split from head to toe so the entire diameter the entire length of the curtain is split so that people will not go in through the curtain but they will go in through the flesh you don't go you don't so when you come to the holy holiest you don't meet with a you don't meet with a, a curtain like you used to meet with a curtain no you come and you find that there is a body Capra leaders. That's why his name is called the breaker. He is he, he breaks. Aya duska ladaras. He breaks instead of him going around breaking the doors. He broke his flesh so that men through his flesh can go in. They can kayala baba 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 A new and living way, a way that has been consecrated. It is living. Listen, it doesn't die. It doesn't die. Doesn't die. <laughs> Woo! By a new and by a living way. That is to say. What are we saying? That is to say. What are we saying? What are we saying? He says, He is flesh. He said, This is my body. He said, Take and eat. Take the ooh, take the access. This month I pray that as you eat this, you are eating that access. Eat to the whole. <laughs> now you have to understand how it works because now with the body when the body has been split you're not going around looking for where the portals have been you don't go looking for where the cavities the spaces where the doors are supposed to be now that's not what you look for you look for where it is that he is broken where is that space where Christ is you follow what I'm saying you, you have to now come to the place where the body is. Where is he broken? Because here's the thing about it. It's not a dead door. He calls it a new and he calls it a living way. It's a new. It's a new. It's a living way. It's a new. It's alive. Hey, it's alive so it moves meaning that the access point can be in a place like this even if traditionally the door wasn't here even if traditionally the door wasn't there because his name is who his name is the breaker that's why Paul was so sorrowful when the Corinthian church was eating the body of Christ so carelessly eating it to satisfy their hunger because he was telling them that there is a door, there is a consistent door this door can be open here, it can be it can be open here it can be open a new and living way, a new this way is alive, listen this is not a ritual we are doing in the church. No. This is a new. This, this is a new and this is a living way. It is a life. Woo. So he said take. He said take. He said take. He said take. And he said, eat. He said, take. He said, take. He said, 
take. See, we need to take this communion, but you have to understand this. He said, take, he said, take it. He said, take it. You're able to come and have this, and you are able to be given. He said, he said, take. You understand what I'm saying? What did he say? He said, take. He said, take it. He said, take and eat. He said, take. He said, take. He said, take. Who? He said, take. What is Jesus saying to us this day? As we're taking this communion, he says, he, what is he saying? He says, take. What did Jesus say? What is Jesus saying this afternoon? He says, take and eat. He said, take. Woo! Say, take. There are things that have been closed out in your life before, but this day they are open. There are things that have been closed. <laughs> and Jesus said it, He broke the bread. He said, There are things that have been closed in your life. He said, He said, But take and eat this. This is my body that has been broken. There are things that have been closed in your life before. He said, but take this and eat it. But there's an experience with God you can never have. But he says, take it by a new and living way that he has consecrated. This is what, this is how we get in. This is how we get in. We, we, this is how we get in. We don't go in through the veil that was dark. We now go in through a body that has been broken. Prophetess, whatever the whatever Meru has not been doing to you, whatever Meru has not been doing, whatever the gates of Meru have been closed in doing, he says, go in through. Yes. Go in through a new and living way, a consecrated way, a set apart. He consecrated it himself. So that when I eat, I'm eating away. Today when I eat, I'm eating a door and I'm eating away. I'm eating a door, I'm eating away. I will go in, I will come out. This month I will go in. This month, <laughs> this month I will go in. <laughs> ah, this month I will go in, this month I will come out. Lato Kaladash. The Bible says, and in the same manner, after they had supped, so, so, the beauty with Jesus is that He allowed for them to engage the door. He allowed for them to engage the flesh. He allowed for them to have the experience to contentment. That's why this month, as you eat the bread, it's not an escape. It's contentment. Isn't? <laughs> it's not an escape it's not a, it's not a we're not escaping as it were it's to contentment after supper so he allowed for them to engage because the beauty of Jesus is that he allows you to engage because his work is to feed the flock he, he doesn't feed them with grass no the grass is for lying down he feeds them with bread he feeds them with the flesh the food of the sheep is not pasture. Pasture lands are for lying down. Ah, the food is his flesh until they are content. Until they are content. Until they are content. Then after supper, in the same manner. So he kept them in that glory. Kept them in that atmosphere. When he was giving them the cup, they, they, they did not disengage. No, he kept them in that atmosphere, locked them in it. It kept on saturating until their entire bodies were saturated with bread. So that the manna would be sustained. So that the manna would be sustained. That the manna 
could be sustained. Because God's work is to lead you from a glory to a glory. God doesn't finish a glory. No, God moves you from that glory to the next one. So, so he, he allowed for it to saturate. Ah, they had eaten bread before. They had been eating bread before, but he allowed this one to saturate. He allowed for this one. Woo! He allowed. <laughs> he allowed. He allowed for it. Then, at that point, when they are satisfied, when they are satisfied with the abundance of bread, when Bethlehem is now truly Bethlehem, then he lifted up the cup in the same manner and he said now this is the blood this is the blood so this is the blood this cup is the blood is the new testament in the blood he said that this cup is not signifying blood he said the cup is the new testament in the blood he shed the blood but he carried the blood to the holiest because he knew he has given us the cup <laughs> he said the cup he did not say that the cup is signifying my blood he did not say <laughs> Jesus did not say that the cup is signifying my blood he said the cup is he said the cup is the cup is the new The new covenant is the cup. That covenant is in the blood. That's why when this cup is handled rightly, what happens in that instant is the self same thing that happened when Jesus was crucified. Because it is because they drank the cup that he had to be crucified. It is because they drank the cup that his blood had to be shed. He did not just shed his blood, no. He, he gave the covenant to the ones he loved. That's why I said we don't do it as a ritual. So he lifted the cup and he said, this one is the New Testament. To the ones that he gave bread, he gave the cup. <laughs> it's not that the bread and the cup go well together. No, it is the ones that he gives bread. When he ministers a door abundantly. Peter spoke and he said, and so a door shall be ministered abundantly to eternal life. When he ministers this door, when he ministers it then, the ones he gives the bread, he gives them the cup gives them the cup so the psalmist said that I will lift up the cup of salvation I will lift it up today I decree may this cup be lifted in this house like never before may everyone that participates and partakes of it let the declaration and proclamation of his death be loud let it not be that there is a space on this earth, a space in Kenya that doesn't hear that Jesus Christ was crucified. So Father, I lift up your cup. I lift up this New Testament. And now may the blood that is in glory begin to speak better things than the blood of Abel. Lord, you visited Cain because of what Abel's blood said. May you now visit your people because of what the blood is speaking. As we take this cup, 
as we take this cup let there come a visitation let the new testament let this new covenant be made real in this ayesho shiko erapaku zalukorni feledesi joshokante tranikapo ezu ipank luronge vaheshu shokir ayesho kalade to the honor to the blessing of your name in jesus mighty name hallelujah we'll be served with a cup and with the bread and then as soon as you eat the bread and you drink that cup the breaker will go before you the presence of god will come upon you in a very uncommon way and the breaker shall go ahead in the mighty name of jesus Balakasat. 